hello excel users how are you guys so in this video i'm going to demonstrate how to create a small neural network model in excel and i have a very tiny example here and we are trying to estimate or predict a flower or petal color for a flower and using the length and the width of flowers so apparently different flowers have different type of length and width and i can see it in the scatter chart i can see that the blue are kind of clustered here and the red are clustered but there is one blue it just wants to get into the red region where it is not belong to anyhow so uh, what we want to do is we want to create this model it, I could directly take this information and I could just use maybe a logistic regression model I can use a discriminant analysis model but let's say we decided to use neural networks model for classification so how do we do this so what we do is the first thing we create a network in here I just create a very basic network with no hidden layers and if you do not have any information about neural networks unfortunately this video is not an introduction to neural networks you have to go ahead and read some information about neural networks first and come back so this is kind of a functional relationship that I see here the length to color and the width to color and if we could just identify that relationship maybe we could identify a color for a mystery flower so how do we do that the first thing we need to do is we as like in a regular regression model we use different weights like uh, the coefficients and we multiply them with the the values the actual values of the length and width and then we add an intercept and in neural network terminology we call it as bias and we get an estimated score so this is like this number times this plus this number times this and then plus the bias but as you can see here these are random numbers so they are not really smartly decided values they are just random values but we're going to keep them like that for now then we are going to turn these estimated scores into probabilities so if i take a look at here this is a probability and i use an activation function so this function what it does is it's a sigmoid function logistic uh, function and it takes any number and turns that into a value between zero and one so this function never goes beyond one and zero it never reaches one and one or zero either so when I do that I treat these numbers as the probabilities right now using these weights and the bias value these all have very high probability to be a red color so in my predicted colors I look at these predicted probabilities and then if the value is larger than 0.5 then I treat that as a red color and otherwise I treat that as a blue color but here all of them are red colors so I'm not really able to do a very good prediction so how do I kind of measure my error in here so what I do is I take the actual color and then I find the difference between these values and I look at my predicted probabilities and I find the difference between these two and then I square it sometimes the difference is negative like if it is zero then the difference is negative if it is one it's a positive so I square the difference and I get the squared error then I sum those squared errors now what I want is I want the smallest possible error and the total error in here and then that the weights that give me that smallest possible error so I use a solver for that and 
I want to, instead of having functions here, I want to just control C here and control V as the values, just the numbers, so because Excel doesn't want functions in the places where it wants to change. It wants just numbers. So here are the values. I go to solver, and then I want to minimize the sum of the squared errors. And then by changing these three values using a nonlinear function. So I click on solve. And then I realize here, okay, my predictions are better. So it looks like everything is correctly predicted except the blue one where the model thinks that it is a red one. And the model is not really, um, uh, you know, it's the, the decision is not bad because it is in that territory. So I think it's, it's kind of understandable why model selected that in that way. So how can we improve this? So let's just also take a look at maybe a mystery flower. If the length of this flower, so that's this one, it's five and the width is 1.3. We don't know the color. And what we could do is we could estimate the score using these and find the probability and it looks like this is a red one so let's just change this into maybe one the length if I do it one it moves onto this direction and now it says the chance for that to be a red is very small so that's why the predicted color is zero now let's just introduce something else in here let's just say maybe what we could do is we could give this uh, model some flexibility so let's try to create maybe a border around this blue and make that blue belong to the blue area and make our classification better so how do we make this more flexible is then the maybe the feature the niche of neural networks it adds additional kind of neurons in here so let's think them as maybe intermediate variables and we first calculate them using some weights and then we use those to calculate the color so in that case it is able to create a better region to classify them into two different categories so it's the same data set so what we do is we first this is my hidden layer this is my input layer and this is my output layer. So as you can see, I have for the first neuron, the node of my uh, hidden layer, the length and the width comes in and then so do them to the, the second one. So now this is H1 is the hidden layer one, H2 is the hidden layer two. If I double click on this function, what you can see is it just takes the, the weights of L21 and W21 and multiplies them with the L and W actual values and then uses a sigmoid function, activates it and gets a probability or a value, okay? And then does the same thing for H2 but for H2, it uses two, uh, the weights from these arrows, okay, coming into two, and then multiplies them with the length and width, then use the sigmoid function again. So this is H1 and this is H2. We do the same thing for the other data points as well. So we are training this model using the inputs, okay? Then these are the actual colors. Then what happens here is, now you're using the first neuron of the first, uh, the, the hidden layer, we are going to find its relation to the color. So we do the same thing, and we are going to multiply H1 times the weight one to C, and it's here and H2 times the weight in here, we add them, 
we could just you know use the sigmoid function in here as well but I decided to put that in and in the next column then we find the predicted probability using this estimated score so you could just put everything in this one and get rid of the column F if you want now we have the probabilities in here then we do the same thing we get the squared errors between the actual value and the predicted probabilities and sum them up but here we do something different because we have a lot of weights to prevent overfitting we put a penalty on larger weights so how do we do that is we multiply the sum the squares of these weights sum of the squares of these weights with a penalty uh, parameter lambda and then we divide the result by by 12 so the 12 comes from there are six of these values divided by six but it also divides by another half so that's the a typical formula there sum of the squares of these weights times the the penalty value parameter and divide by 12 and then we add that into the sum of the squares. So this is 0 0.30, 0 0.10. The total adds up to be 0 0.40. Then we minimize this value. So instead of just minimizing the sum of the squared error, so sometimes we try to minimize this, the weights go very to a very large values, to very large numbers. So we want to keep them within range. We don't want to overfit so we are introducing this lambda and if I try to minimize this and I get these numbers let's just try some random numbers first and let's see if we could get those numbers ourselves so I put the random number in there oops let's just my mouse is not behaving well okay is this a RAND function this is a RAND function. Somehow my mouse doesn't want to plug. Okay, control C. Let's just copy paste them on here. Okay. So here, those are the random numbers. And I want to copy them and maybe just paste them as values. So these are the numbers, but the predicted colors are not very good. So I want to minimize this function. I go to the solver. And let's first try the nonlinear solver. Solve it. And it tells me that 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, and then 1. So it is not able to really minimize this value to a smaller number. But if you recognize the earlier value, it was smaller than 0.69 so this kind of stuck at uh, got stuck at a local minimum it wasn't able to proceed further so if I try this one more time with a new solver and I'm gonna use a heuristic solver in here and copy this and paste it in here solver and maybe evolutionary under options I said do not require any bounds and now it uses genetic algorithm in here and it tries to find a, the best solution so now we try to use this one it looks like this one is not able to improve either so it wasn't able to do a better job so let's try this again if I keep it at zero it doesn't really work well so it doesn't let me just uh, I'm sorry I will have to just go ahead and purchase a new mouse otherwise you guys are going to make fun of me okay I'll just paste them Okay, let's just use the nonlinear solver one more time. And now it 
gets up to 0 0.68 and now this is also the um, similar as with no hidden layers um, but if you recognize open the original file the values that you see there are better and they give you a better minimization number so if I don't try lambda let's just make this zero and try solver one more time and now let's write, see what happened so the classification stayed the same it wasn't uh, really improved value so let me just make this lambda to be again 0 0.01 or maybe just put 0.1 in here and just 1.06 so it is able to keep the weight smaller and because it has a higher penalty now but the predicted colors are not improving and actually they would improve better if you don't put a penalty there so now uh, if you take a look at here it has the same structure and you are seeing it if just use the weights that I proposed before the original weights and you are going to see that it just fits well but is it a very good idea to just fit it the best way because it may be an overfit so we know that this really belongs to the red area so this may be an outlier in here maybe this is a better uh, result to be, to use so you could just keep it in this way and uh, if you don't want to overfit so I also had maybe a, this similar example but put the blue colors somewhere in here so now the errors is small and it was able to predict better because now this is uh, all these blue colors are in here all the red colors are there this is an easier prediction for the model than than this one it's not an easier prediction but you know it uh, maybe it's more accurate prediction because the result is going to be more more uh, more accurate accuracy uh, percentage is higher in this case because these two clusters are far away from each other so I also have some R codes for you if you want you could try these codes in R you can copy them and you can go to R and then you can open an R script and run everything in here it's going to run everything for us this is the neural network with uh, one hidden layer with two neurons in here and we have the input layer and output layer error is actually 0.41 so they did a better job using gradient descent most probably so I would recommend that for bigger problems rely on R but for to understand how neural networks work you could just use Excel to understand the idea but rely on R or Python for uh, maybe uh, more complicated or more capable software other than Excel for neural networks but I think Excel gives you an idea how this neural networks really the modeling works okay thanks for watching